Oh, you're a cool one. You're gonna build it back anyway. You're fine, right? What? what? Big buffer. What? Dang. Was, it, was that the come? Oh, flips on the legs with the crouching medium kick. Man, his. You weren't kidding about the stop of the stand jab after the X. No, like he likes to call people out with that. I've seen him do it to a lot of other players as well. It's like his timing on these delayed jabs have definitely kept him out of trouble. The stun's becoming a factor. The double dirty bull. I was gonna say, is that gonna be the Kami? Stopping with Stan Jab? Stopping with Stan Jab? Hey, bro, back up. Big fan, we call it the big fan. The big Kami oh, loves it's the handshake. It's the handshake. The big, big fan. fan. Oh, that's there it is. We found it, Steve. We found it? Damn, if I see him do it, I'm a big fan. He tried to do it right there. He, he, he definitely tried. Dive oh, kick. that's what's you so good about, about that. that. Dive kick. He just side switch on top of it. Kami back in control. Four throw. I like the whip right there on the stand jab. Another throw. Uh oh, not oh, good. No. Activate the look at the damage. I like the back dash. Didn't want to take the command throw. That stun bar would have been crazy high. Big fan. Oh, that could have been critical. Oh no, the time Oh my god. By the nerf. That was so oh, close. Oh my god, you got saved by the oh, nerf, bro. I like can fireball activate. You are trying kinda hard over there. Kami with the stop. I Let's see. talk about that. Let's talk I about see that. you, wait, little wait, bro. Wait. Let's talk about that, bro. I don't want to talk about that. That, that, that boy was plus five. My boy Akuma said, <laughs> plus five. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> Kami versus Smug. All right, bro. I see. I don't. I look, and I'm gonna tell you right now. Please do not be mistaken. I'm a huge Smug fan. So much so, <laughs> if you check his wrist. He has Tasty Steve beads. It's only like three in existence. And he has a pair of Tasty Steve beads. That's a true story. That's how much I rock with the boy Smug. I actually, in all honesty, Tommy told me I owe him beads now. So now I got to hook him up too. But it might be depending on this match. I don't know if I might be able to give him some unless he wins You can't be set. giving away that much power. There's a lot you of get... power to have out in the world, bro. That's international currency out here. Big oh, jump in, oh, big damage, oh, and we're switching oh. back. Uh, oh, team. you're dead! Big you're dead. deader than dead! Exploded. I caught it this time. I almost dropped my mic when I caught it. Woo! We in there. My reaction I saw the fumble. Man, I hope we got that on camera. That was godlike. <laughs>
Can we get that in the outtake reel? Because the fumble, the juggle was oh, real. Oh, I caught it. I caught that bad boy. Here we go. Just like how we caught these hands. Smug, getting that first round. So clean. Maximum efficiency on the meter. And back to Visco 2, by the way. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. The tap. Look at this event. So long. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Big heavy punch right there. Oh, you know what? We've not seen many anti-airs coming from Kami. Big jump in, side switch to keep the corner. So smart. Smothers on set point. EX fireball to stop the advance. Those neutral jumps once again. Walk up, crouching medium kick. Gets the command throw with the V trigger. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Quit. Oh, man. We're going back to the lobby, bro. Eighteen pro players from across the globe. Top eight placements, ranking premier event winners, even Capcom Cup champions. So many different paths, and what seems like an endless array of characters has led them all to this very stage. And as far as you and I, we have the pleasure of seeing those paths collide. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Hollywood, Raw TV, and this is Street Fighter League.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the event we've all been waiting for. This is Street Fighter League Season 3, brought to you in part by Street Fighter V as well as Capcom. My name is Vicious, here with Tasty Steve, and we have one hell of a season for you this year. Look, we've been through this time and time again. This is the third time, and it is the charm, but I gotta let you know there's been a few changes on the Street Fighter League seasonal front, especially for Part 3. First and foremost, it is now an international affair. That's right, an international players ball. That means the teams are not made up of only United States players. It's all around the world, excluding Japan for a very good reason. And unlike these other seasons, the team captains were chosen via the CPT point leaderboard, which means these teams are going to be made up of not some of these crowd favorites, not any of the online players. This is the best of the best. The creme de la creme is what you're going to get here this season of Street Fighter League Season 3. And for everybody that's tuned into the preseason season of Street Fighter League, we've shown you the roster of each and every one of those teams. However, we've made some significant changes due to the pandemic. Pandemic, but it's still going to be one insane season. The roster consists of Nasser coming through with Captain Big Bird, mm -hmm. Angry Bird, and Samurai. UYU, another newcomer, with Oil King as captain, Kami and JB as teammates. Team all in consisting of Idom, A to One Strider, and SKZ. Alpha Three with Punk as captain, CJ Truth and nephew. With Psycho Shinobi with Hot Dog as captain, Sien and Kaba, and then Dynamite with Smug Dynamite. as captain, Men RD and Gamer B. Now, some of these names again are brand new to the roster. To be specific, it's going to be JB, SKZ, Kaba, Men RD and Gamer B due to the fact that there are some travel restrictions yeah. going on in the world, so some of the players could not make it. However, it does not take away from the talent that we have for Street Fighter League. That's definitely true. I mean, and with these new players, these international players coming in and trying to make their stamp on Street Fighter League, we got to make sure they know the rules, and here they are for you as well. The ban rule still is in effect, ladies and gentlemen. That means the opposing team does have the opportunity to block one of the someone they think is a threat, or maybe that some character they just don't want to fight can be stopped in their tracks. Keeping in mind, you can only do that once. That means on the second half of that season where you're going to to have to play the teams twice because that's the way it works it's a double round robin every team will get an opportunity to play twice they will not be able to ban that same character and that's going to be one of the most strategic things to think about going forward in the season and again throughout the entirety of the season there are 15 weeks of competitive play going to the finals of week number 16 where we determine the champion of who is going to face off against street fighter league japan mm. the champions of last year everyone is competing for their share of hundred fifty thousand dollars at the end of the season but most of all for the chance to be the world's best team well, just to be a team, you got to have three people. So let's break down the format. And it's the same song and dance that you've been here before. 3v3 was Seda style format. That means it's going to be 1v1. Whoever loses will be eliminated. The winner will go to the bottom of the queue to be cycled in if need be. That is going to continue until there is no team standing on one side and there's only one remaining victor. That is who will win the team challenge. That is who will go forward. That will be the format the entire season. And again, each and every one of those matches are consisting of two out of three, which is absolutely important because we are crowning ourselves an MVP midway through the season as well as the end of the season, sponsored by Seiko, which is throwing out those watches, right? Those Street Fighter V watches as prizes for those MVP candidates. Season three of Street Fighter League kicks off and we're going to get into our first team battles and it's going to be Team Nasser, that new team added versus another new team. It's going to be UYU and the second team battle to start us on our path to playoffs is going to be Alpha 3 versus Team All In. But guess what? It's going to be right after this break. Guys, stay tuned. Street Fighter League season three kicks off right after this. expansion completed. Pseudo personality asset is imported properly. Biological brain connected. Dawn unit zero. Start up sequence will begin. Well now, little piece of junk. Time to wake up. Dawn unit zero. Activate. Well, Joey, who is a piece of junk?
strong. Show me something worth taking. Welcome back, Street Fighter League continues right now, and we're gonna get to our very first team battle, and it is gonna be Nasser versus UYU. The new and improved Nasser, I like to say, only because they've added a little bit of spice, a little bit of victory to their SFL team with Samurai. We have I personally think this is crazy considering how strong the team is. Well, without a doubt. Now we have two Capcom Cup competitors in the likes of the birds, right? Big Bird and Angry Bird. And on top of that, you've talked about the bald eagle himself, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Samurai being a veteran in a season one and two of Street Fighter League, most notably for his OCV factor. But I feel like with this team, that's not going to be as effective, right? Because you don't even have to be in that spot. You have two Capcom Cup competitors. I can't, we, we can't emphasize that enough, but that's not to take away from from UYU as well. Again, we do have Kami, JB coming back, and Oil King, right? These guys have been well versed in the world of Street Fighter for so long, right? JB being the only veteran, but Kami and Oil King, definitely veterans when it comes to the game of Street Fighter V. No, that's definitely true in all honesty. I mean, I feel like you have two very strong teams. You have two veterans of Street Fighter League. The mixing of these teams is going to be really good. Now it's all about the play. I feel like this is going to be really iffy for Nasser because I feel like this is their first time playing together as a team. Mm -hmm. um, UIU is, has been traveling for quite some time, not only um, on that offseason, but UIU is a tight-knit family when it comes to team games. So I'm very interested to see how that dynamic is going to play out here in this season of Street Finally. Keeping all that in mind, I'm actually kind of curious to see how Nasser feels their first since it's their first time around into Street Fighter League I'm kind of curious about their thoughts how they're feeling going into the competition and for that We actually have Rob TV who had an interview with them. Take a look uh, So team Nasser you guys actually are one of the first two teams to actually Buy in to Street Fighter League you and team UIU. Uh, what can you tell us about your team? Well, Nasser has been has been involved since 2017. Uh, I was the first player since when they opened. Uh, Tekken Master was also one of the first players. And they started with FGC. They thought it was like pretty easy roads into esports. So, obviously, Nasser makes good choices. They picked you up. They picked up Angry Bird. And even outside of that, you guys had the foresight to pick up the GOAT, the Street <laughs> Fighter League GOAT, he is the GOAT. Samurai. So. Did you actually watch any of last season's uh, Street Fighter League and see how well Samurai performed? I actually did watch a lot of highlights of Samurai. And how about you? Did, did you I, see any of it? I've watched a lot of highlights. I watched also, I've been seeing a lot of tweets. Uh, every, every episode is always talks about Samurai OCV or the OCV yeah. master and stuff like that. I think, I might, I might be wrong, but I think he OCV like almost every team. I season. think, Samurai, didn't you OCV literally every team? Yeah. Was it every team or almost every team? It was every team. Not oh, yeah. my, I don't think it was my team, Team Gale. I don't think he OCV does. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. <laughs> anyway, Samurai, uh, <laughs> do you have any, do you feel like you have any uh, weight on your shoulders because of how we all look at you as a player and we know how amazing you are in, in this format? Or would you say that there's less weight on your shoulders because all due respect to your previous teams, 
this is definitely the strongest team you've been a part of by far. Yeah, so um, the first season and the second season were just completely different teams, different um, matches, and this is a whole new season. So you just gotta focus on this season and anything that was before is in the past already. I'm just gonna focus on now. Oh, that, that's so philosophical, man. I felt that, <laughs> no. that in my chest. That's so beautiful. <laughs> okay, so as far as, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like you guys' team is one of the top two teams here. Uh, I've talked to some people behind the scenes and there's some people who would say that Alpha 3, Punk, uh, Nephew, and CJ Truth might be the best team here. Do you think that's your biggest competition and do you think your team is stronger than theirs? Uh, honestly, I mean, they might have other opinions, but I think Alpha 3 is probably going to be our toughest opponent in this uh, in this like tournament. Punk, obviously Punk is the, the best player in the world. Nephew, although people haven't really talk, been talking about him, after playing him now, I'm, been, I'm playing him way before then, he improved so much, like he improved. There's a lot of difference between Nephew now and Nephew then. So a lot of people are missed, like they kind of, you know, not really talking much about like Nephew. Like underrated yeah. a bit, yeah. And, and CJ, you know, he's CJ, so he's always good. He's always fun. He has great fundamentals, so. Best anti airs in the game, um, arguably. You're never jumping on that guy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's Alpha 3 for me. Okay, and then for the last thing, you guys actually have Team UYU up next, which is the two body and teams. What are you guys actually thinking about going into the UIU match? Uh, is there any specific strategy that you have going in? And do you have any predictions of who they might ban on your team? We're banning Rashid. So, uh, yeah, we're banning Rashid because I can't afford to play another character. And they can't ban Seth because All King plays Rashid and Seth. So if they ban Seth, they, well, All King can't play unless he has, he has another third character. So I'm, the only ban, the only logical ban is uh, Akuma. They would have banned Zeku, but Angry Bird doesn't really main Zeku anymore. So it would be pointless to ban Zeku. So they're probably trying to take out Samurai. All right, guys. So uh, best of luck to you with your match with UIU. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Without a doubt, they're absolutely confident coming into Street Fighter League Season 3. Again, they're actually going for the ban against it's Rashid, crazy. straight up. <laughs> they actually ban Rashid. They're looking for JB and Oil King as their targets in their first roundabout, right? So it, it, that makes absolutely, like, complete sense for me. We've seen this time and time again versus just Rashid in general, even exclusively JB, because once again, a veteran of Street Fighter League. That's a very strong thing to do, and I feel like it sets the tone. Keeping in mind, I feel like that means you're going for victory right away right i mean typically you're only going to be able to ban this t this character this one time right mm -hmm. after this that means you're assured victory so i feel like this is data as well as just getting a feel for the team you're going to have to play a second time around anyway and without a doubt again uiu is actually gearing up ready to go but i am kind of curious as to how they're feeling now that they are the new kids on the block with street fighter league right well i mean with that we have more than enough words because Rob TV is standing by. We have an interview with Team UYU. Let's hear it. Team UYU. I look and just have you guys sit here. I'm already seeing clean Vapor Max, off-white fours, some ones with them like look like some Spider-Man letters. Don't kill me for <laughs> not knowing exactly which uh, ones those are. But you got the damn diamond dog bones on your neck. What can you guys tell me about uh, UIU, one of the first teams to ever buy in the Street Fighter League out, uh, on the side of Nasser? It seems like they think a whole lot about marketing. Yeah, you know, besides for being like, you know, really talented players or whatever, like, you know, getting scouted from that, I feel like they looked into the <laughs> FGC and it was like, who is the best looking player in every region? So they were like, Taiwan, let's get the best looking Taiwanese player. They, they looked at Korea, they was like, let's get the best looking Korean. And then, you know, me and JB are twins, you know, so, you know, we came as a package deal. Okay, I have braids naturally, yeah. but I, well, I just Oh, you just out. let your braids yeah, out. That's where the curls come from and today. everything. Oh, okay, that's the big drip. All right, so uh, there's something that, you know, a lot of people have been saying. It's pretty much like the elephant in the room. A lot of people haven't brought it up but I gotta be straightforward with it. Call me. People are saying that you look like Snoop Dogg from the Murder Was The Case video. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to say about this? I don't know. I feel like people who, you know, I've gotten compared to literally everybody under the sun at this point. So I, I just let it go. I just let it, whatever happens, happens. I've gotten compared to literally rappers, actors, If Street everybody. Fighter doesn't work out, would you be interested in starting a mumble rap career? <laughs> nah, I think I would go into fashion so I could teach you how to dress a little bit. Whoa, <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, the disrespect. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, a lot of people seriously though are saying that uh, they feel like, you know, obviously we have Oil King and JB, two of the greatest Rashid players in the world, easily. 
Um, but you guys are on the same team, and obviously Street Fighter League has a banning system. If they ban Rashid, then neither of you guys can use Rashid. For people who are thinking that that's going to make you guys an easy out, what do you say to that? No, I think we are ready about our secondary. Okay. No matter me or JB, our secondary is good. I think not a very important point in it was that um, if when they ban, uh, I mean, if they do not ban Rashid, would me and him still be able to both play Rashid, even though we're in the same team? And the fact that we are able to play Rashid um, means that it makes it a little easier for us when they don't ban Rashid. Same thing only can ban our Rashid one time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They cannot ban the second time. That's true. I think it's okay. So they're going to have to deal with two Rashids pretty much afterwards. Oh my goodness. You I don't, know, I don't uh, envy them. Another good benefit out of it is that, you know, most people, they have a secondary that you know of. So, but you've never seen these two people really play another secondary. That's so true. you can't really study or have footage. Yeah. So by default, <laughs> you just have to think, you know, maybe JB secondary sucks or, or you can secondary sucks. Maybe, yeah, but, but you, you don't just, know though. Yeah, you never know. Unlike, you know, say Angry Bird, I could go watch him play Ibuki, Zeku, or any of his characters. Oh, he's calling, yeah. yo, that's a mind game. He's yeah. already calling his characters out. That's beautiful right yeah. there. So, you know, I feel like it's an element of surprise with them. So I think it works out pretty well. So with that, you guys, you know, you brought up Angry Bird. That's the team that you guys are going to be playing today, Team Nasser. Do you think that there's like a bit of extra competition because they're the other bought in team? Like you want to represent UIU, UIU well against Nasser? And outside of that, do you think that with them banning Rashid, do you think that uh, if you beat them right now, you'll be able to send a message to the rest of the league? Yeah, if they ban Rashid and we win, then, you know, like I said, the element of surprise happened to work out. You know, they, they expected the other characters to be bad or whatever the case may be and it works so now other teams will have to think you know maybe i should be in or you king secondary or jb secondary instead of his uh his main character i feel like win or lose it's okay uh my main goal right now is to show that my secondary is actually pretty strong and i can actually hang with uh like everyone else who's here with my secondary so uh if i can show that then that'll make people think twice about how they're gonna ban from now on okay yeah that's smart win or lose doesn't matter yeah, I feel like you guys clearly have a, a very well out, well thought out strategy. Uh, you clearly put a whole lot into this, and I'm looking forward to see how things go against Team Nasser. UIU making a very strong point, not an actual Street Fighter, but the fact that they say that they are the swaggiest team in the FGC, I, I cannot disagree. As a swagtologist, a PhD holding swagtologist, I can tell you right now, UIU's they're pretty high up there when it comes to just being like the best well-dressed team in the FGC. But here is a completely different format because that doesn't matter. We're talking about gameplay. And let's look Let's look at the order just a little bit before we get into this first sure. match. We talked about the bands. UIU's order is going to be Kami first. We're going to have JB and then Oil King as the anchor on this first side. Give mm -hmm. me just some quick thoughts about how you feel about that order. Well, the reason why they picked that order is because I think they're aiming for Samurai first, right? They're looking for who could potentially be the weakest link, not to take away from any of the players' accolades, right? But they're gauging their strength. They want to go for Samurai first, which is also why UIU chose to ban out Akuma. They want to force that first win, carry that momentum into games two and three to get themselves ready for both birds. Now we're going to get into it, though. Our first match of team play here for Street Fighter League kicks off right now. And because of the ban, oh, man, we have Ryu Let's go. going up against Seth. This is going to be the first you, one. Steve, do you see, see the, the outfit, outfit on Look at Seth? Seth's outfit. Do you this, see the outfit perfect. on Seth? Perfect. Is perfect. that a UYU logo? This perfect. is a world premiere <laughs> to me. W -w -w world premiere. World premiere. All right. So... All jokes aside, serious business. The reason why they banned Akuma, again, is to aim for Samurai. But if you did your homework, if you tuned in to season two, his Ryu was more than enough. But that's not going to be who he's picking. It's actually Kage. What a switch up. Kage, another one of those characters that we were talking about in the last season, just in CPT and tournament play, ridiculously strong, right? Um, and very underutilized when it comes to tournament play. Seth, another one of those characters. UIU and both Nasser both have exclusive skins available in Street Fighter V. How does it, what does that do for team morale? You're coming into the league and you're like, hey guys, don't worry about only having jerseys. You got official outfits represented in the game. Can I download this? Like <laughs> now, actually, this is actually sick. Even the color scheme is mm -hmm. pretty top tier. All right. Uh, 
Going into it already. Kage, yeah, using that. Oh, Ooh. wait, big jumping, catching the tangent engine. Big damage as well. The hard stuff. He went for the double fireball combo. Close to stun is Kami. Out of the corner now, looking for an activation. V trigger mm -hmm. one. V trigger one. I like that. Hold the up back. Not too much worried about the throw. You just don't want to be in this corner. I love the defense coming from Samurai and holding that corner as well. No stranger to danger indeed. Yeah, not biting for that first axe kick. Now we're trying to look to see if Samurai is going to have enough to Ooh, get out of this nice. corner. Nice! The roundhouse to start off. Good damage conversion with the trigger on top of it and still has a little bit left. The axe kick in the corner. Confirm on the crouch. And what a conversion. Get exploded. So again, we talked about that situation in the corner, right? What is Samurai going to do to contest against Seth when it comes to those axe kicks? And what is Kami going to do to prepare himself just in case Samurai tries to jump out of the corner? Kami answered both situations very well. I love Kami playing really calm right now using that tandem engine. Got exposed a little bit but for the big jump by Samurai early on. Low forward fireball, one of the main tools you're going to see here. That low forward coming from Kage is a very strong neutral tool. Gets the offense started. Ooh. Nice read on the jump. Once again, Kami sharp on the air anti airs. Yeah, that roundhouse from Seth is so good. Gets a conversion into that back Tatsu kick, which also dissipates fireballs. Ooh. Nice. Crouching roundhouse again. Very, very Ooh. far reaching. Okay, no punish on that with fireball there. But either way, Kami is looking to strike with some of these counter hits, right? He's fishing with that low medium punch. Being plus two, it's hard to press a button in between. So it's kind of scaring Samurai from pressing a button. But still, now retains his turn. Backing off. Very careful. Now it's very dangerous, right? Both players Ooh. on that critical art. He could have grabbed and finished the rest of that tandem engine. I like the axe kicks dash up. Didn't think he was going to have time to block. Oh. Did you hear that? JD actually mm -hmm. called out the usage of V-Skill against Kami. Right on the money. Activation route, you already know. Axe kick. Good check right there. Just to stop that oh, offense he's not dash jumping. up. He's not, mm, nobody ever jumps that. Raw stats. dash up. Hold this EA dead. At the price of what? Other than Kage's soul? The critical art, right? Use of meter. Absolutely worth it to seal that round all tied up here, but still in the first game. These are two out of three apiece. Install. Give me everything. Okay. Balls on that fireball. No anti-air this time. I love Kami playing a very calm game. Very good on the anti-air. Didn't catch that last one. Oh, oh just like a raw stop. Oh, that was one of the things that they mm -hmm. mentioned earlier. JB was actually telling Kami before the game started, he's like, you know what? Make sure your strings are tight because Samurai is not yes. afraid to Ooh, throw out the uppercuts in between. Again, but just a little too early right there. Didn't get the follow-up. Still controlling that corner. One of the best Ooh, traits that Kami it? has had in this set is the fact that he's not jumping. Great anti-air. Conversion into the CA. This is big damage. Not only that, still in control of this corner as well. Oh, actually, no. Pushes the mid-screen. My mistake. Uh oh. I'm going to tell you right now, Seth's throw game is very strong. You know who else's throw game is strong? Kage's. You better respect the up close. Good fireball trying to control it. Ooh, Ooh the tandem. Install. The dash up, disrespecting the space. And I love that. You saw how he just constantly kept going to the jumps, making him second guess some of these choices. Seth wins. skilled on this too stupid. Okay, and uh, I think you, you more focus in higher. I think you yeah, yeah, no, I let him jump. Also, when you do uh, the heavy tonsil, oh, make sure you do a light button afterwards. Like, remember the light DP. Punish. Mm -hmm. Starts off with a crouching medium punch. And we can hear in between the sets as both teams are wired into the player who is actually in the match. And both of these guys getting help from their team. Oil King, JB, giving words of wisdom to Kami. I like that response towards the axe kick. Big time punish incoming for Samurai. Gets a ton of damage and a lot of screen carry on that. And, and plus a lot of stun. And now you see, you see Samurai going straight back to this very compact play. I feel like this is when your strings being tight is exactly going to come in. Samurai knows he's down the game. He's obviously going to tighten up that gameplay. You see now he's willing and waiting, playing the life lead game. When he gets close and uh, comfortable enough to throw out a medium kick, he will follow it up with a uh, fireball. But again, waiting for that anti-air just in the right space and contesting Kami with that low medium kick once again. Now you see the game plan. Samurai is waiting for that tandem engine. He's playing off of that against Kami. But I feel like it changes com like completely. Once he gets that install, right, now it's going to be like, all right, 
Kami's gonna go in. I'm a He's gonna be as offensive as possible. So Angry Bird was telling Samurai that he shouldn't be afraid to walk. I'm sorry, Big Bird was telling Samurai that he shouldn't be afraid to walk up and throw. And I'm not sure how smart that was because you don't want to walk up on Seth with the intention to throw. She has really good buttons. Her target is really strong, and we've seen what he can do. Great interrupt. What knowledge by Kami right now. Keeping the corner. This second round, game number two, looking a lot stronger for Kami. He lost the first one. Anti-air with the delay as well. The EX on top of it. And you need to be careful for the throw. It was unfortunate that Samurai went for the dive kick instead, but here comes an activation. Okay. The reversal. That was so smart. Takes away a lot of that meter Ooh. as well. And have a seat and go into the air. Boom. This final round. How does it sound? Boom. Okay, I wanted to double check. I, I Add it to the game. I missed it. I missed it. Oh, big, big jump, jump in. in to counter the ten damage. Big damage. The X top two. Spending the bar, I like that for the carry, the damage, and that stun. In the words of the classic, that's what I like to call big damage. Damn, that was beast. <laughs> oh, that oh, was oh. beast. Oh, air to air with the axe kick. One of the strongest tools in Seth's box. She has so many options when it comes to keeping somebody locked down. Oh. I love the usage of the okay. B skill, and look at the damage. Oh, empty jump, jump low. low into There's the a stun. stun. Kami. That's be more than enough for Kami. Hecaton, Kari's crouch jab and then uppercut. Didn't even need it. That is going to spell victory. First blood going to Team UYU. And what a showing. First match Street Fighter League to take out a heavy hitter. A clutch master like Samurai going down in the first team battle match of Street Fighter League Season 3. If you paid attention to anything that's happened in the Street Fighter League, know the Samurai is a heavy hitter. This is a morale hit, but also, here comes the next perspective. Hugs all around. Hugs all around. Here comes the next perspective of what's about to happen in this team battle. It's UIU versus Nasser. You see JB going up to take his seat, as well as Angry Bird on the other side of things. And this is when business is picking up. Man, I'm telling you guys right now. Let me calm down so I can, let me collect myself. Let me put this into perspective. The fact that Kami came in on his first Street Fighter League match gets the W, that's one thing. But you got the W versus someone who has successfully OCB every team. That's one of the best players you can have on your team, and it's also one of the best players you can have as a name. A notch on your belt. Shout outs to Kami, but the job's not done yet. We have more contenders. It's going to be Angry Bird coming up against JB. What are some of your thoughts on the initial matchup? Okay, so I do like to emphasize the fact that JB has been here before for both seasons, yeah. right? Part of the championship team in Season 1 with Team Inferno alongside Broly Legs and Punk, right? Going into Season 2, he had a very, very... He had, he had a pretty solid year, I would yeah, say, yeah. in that season with a 66% win record. Majority of the times he went up to bat, he's taken down whoever was before him, right? But I will say this is a whole different ballgame. As you mentioned at the top of the show, Tasty Steve, this is the international player's ball. There's mm -hmm. going to be so much... So many more harder tournaments that are harder opponents to yeah. go through, right? These guys are well-versed, well-traveled, just veterans of each and every one of these tournaments that have happened each and every year, right? Again, now Angry Bird sitting up at that seat. He is a two-time Capcom Cup competitor, competitor, about to be three as he just won one of the CPT mm -hmm, online mm -hmm. qualifiers. He just registered again, yeah. So this is going to be a whole different ball game. And if I'm not mistaken, Angry Bird is now playing Seth as well as having that main Zeku uh, now in the back seat. Well, I experience is very high on both sides, right? JB was one of those players we've been looking at for years. Uh, successfully made it through Street Fighter League as well as getting signed to Team UYU. Has a very strong team backing him, but also the most experienced on the UYU team at this point. And that's something that you pointed out, and I'm glad you did. But when it comes to, I feel like, just experience overall, when it comes to who's got those big Ws under their belt, I got to give it to Angry Bird and Big Bird. Like, I feel like them playing on the stage, having that experience time in and time out, as well as being some of the strongest players, not in only their region, but in the world, says a lot. JB has his work cut out for him going into this next set. I can tell you that right now. Do you know who JB has as a secondary? I, I personally know. So, as, as it says, Poison on the screen is the character that we're getting. And it's going to be Poison versus Seth. Excellent. Coming back up, Excellent. Poison, one of the characters we saw Idom uh, pull out 
took him to a Capcom Cup victory. Mm -hmm. And it started here on Street Fighter League. So keep that in mind. Round these characters, one. you may be watching them in the league, but they may be on a CPT stage before you know it from these exact players. And early confirmed with the high heel. That was at the perfect spacing to punish that axe kick, right? Mm -hmm. Get the recovery on that. Oh, gosh. Dash up. Ooh. Ooh. The axe kicks. Just so abusive right now. Just walking in and out of that range. Andrew Bird. Oh, are you trying to get this stun off? And he does. Did you see Seth go above the anti-air mm -hmm. at the right angle? Mm -hmm. Again, that crowd's strong for poison. At certain angles, again, right on top of her, it's not going to be as successful when it comes to anti-airing your opponent. Oh, get caught. Installing. One of the things Seth has is the fact that the walk-up throw pressure game to get to the corner is very good. You're not going to catch a lot of people swinging in that neutral range versus Ooh. Seth for a very strong, for a very, very smart reason. Nice! Confirm off the crotch medium kick. Side switch with the V skill. Outside of that Molotov, blocking the tandem engine. If it is blocked, it is your turn, and Seth is minus two after that. Ooh, the poison cocktail still got one more there. Dang, it's the buy one, get one free special. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got to keep the corner, gets the high heel right after it. All right, knock down in the corner. Look at the damage that was left up there on Seth's bar. Activate the crouching heavy punch. Beat trigger one. Definitely going to leave you in block stun for quite some time, but trying to find a hit. Not thinking that that CA might finish the job, so I don't blame him. Yeah, I think one solid hit confirmed to a critical art will do it for either player, right? Forward throw there from JB. Oh, the back and forth right now. Using that dash of Cess. Okay. Oh, okay. So, one solid chip sequence. Oh, wait a wait minute. A oh, JB knew. Okay, so that was absolutely brilliant because Angry Bird immediately went for the meaty low forward to go into the spin kick into critical art, right? She saw blood, but still forgot to see what's Fire down below away. from mm -hmm. JB. A full bar of critical art, well spent to tie it up in game one. My man went to, just forgot about that stick of butter down there, went to buy a whole new box, thinking he was gonna go to a whole new round. Nah, man, you gotta worry about this CA first. Just wake up CA from poison and keep it going. Imagine going through your ingredients list and forgetting about the stick of butter. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Good luck trying to cook. <laughs> I love the usage of the V skill. Goes right in the target combo. And look at this. Corner in favor. And this is what I was talking about. Oh, wow. Just back up a little bit. Small shimmy. Goes for the overhead. And that should be the job. Yep. That's more than enough. Oh, my God. Always to stand Yeah. Yeah. Always. Always. More than enough. When you're in the corner, yeah. don't be afraid to veer reversal. Because, okay. he, because he does a lot of heavies. Yeah. So just be able to knock him down. Okay. Yeah, he likes to take throws too a lot too. Yeah. So you can throw him a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And be careful for low forward activation. <laughs> JP, getting encouragement. We talked about what it means to have support from your team. Oil King still pumping up the squad and has not even played yet. Once again, the beat skill from Seth. The throw. Yeah, those long normals. Oh, actually made the B skill whip and get out of the corner, but look oh. at the punishment, though. Interesting, yeah, so he went for Hecatonkeries into the B skill, thinking that it would connect, or at least I think he just wanted to, you know, move forward a little bit. Oh, Got the hit, damage. didn't believe in the cancel. Poison Cocktail right there. Being able to cancel that stance, walk back and forth. Oh. Oh, and that's one of the biggest dangers against, like, you know, anti-airing Seth is the fact that Seth can change their trajectory mm -hmm. at any point in time, whether it's, like, when they activate the axe kick and which strength they activate. Jeez. Go for it. Such a good tool. Wow, the standing heavy punch is actually ranging out a bunch of these Seth normals. Dash up using the stance cancel. I mean, I can still hear Oil King. He said he's going to jump, and he mm -hmm. did. Angry Bird jumped right when he called it. Man, I'm getting excited about this. Another throw. This is the first thing that I talked about mentioning Seth. The walk speed, the pokes keeps a lot of people honest because they don't want to deal with the throws. And it doesn't seem like the worst. And caught you swinging you? once again. How much damage JB is, is in his head right now. Big Bird. Oh my gosh. I wonder what, what's on Big Bird's mind. He's Double in trouble. Dash, dash up. Forward. Angry Bird, what are you doing? I'm, I want to know what Big Bird's thinking right now. What is it? 
double oh, dash to Mugly Tandy. Oh, crush counter. Double V skill to get out of the corner. I love the shimmy with the standing heavy punch from Poison. Oh, just raw? Small whip. Whip it. Whip it good. I love the spacing the low four from so far away. That's exactly what I was talking about, but the V skill saves the day. Sets back in control. Another four thrown to this corner. So lucky that Axe kicked whip. Here's cancels all over the place from JD. Wow. Unfortunate. This Everybody just jumped right out of that, that roundhouse for that awkward exchange. Not gonna use CA because it's not gonna kill. Okay, nah. nice. This time he got the combo off of Hecaton Crease into the V skill, going right into the big one after this follow up. Not quite dead yet. One mm -hmm. touch will do it though. Lots of scaling. Great backdash. Activate. Oh man, that could have been a confirm. I thought I was gonna see a CA right there, but nothing. The axe kick works. Oh my gosh. Why are you not super? It's okay. No, I, I thought the. It's a Molotov combo. Yeah, yeah. Ooh wee. Man. That was that could have gone either way, right? Mm -hmm. Just to see, just to kind of tell you how close each and every one of these games are. This is only the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. And now wow. we're gearing up for Big Bird going up against Oil King, the two captains facing off against each other. It's Nasser and UIU here in the first week of battles. And man, it's, I, I feel like at the pace this is going, I'm probably gonna lose my voice. The, the first matches have already been awe inspiring at this point. I'm thinking about what Oil King has been been talking the entire time in his team's ear, made correct calls on some of the options that uh, Team NASA was going to make, and I just feel like there's so much control. JB going down this time around, the set's tied 1-1 in this first team battle here at Street Fighter League. And now we have the captain versus our first captain versus captain match here. And this is going to be the telling right here. This is two pirate factions going at each <laughs> other right now. That's what's happening right now. One's just really swaggy. One's got a new eagle. One of them being Samurai. Man, this season's going to be sick. I am so excited. This is going to be so sick. Once again, Nasser, this is their first time playing together as a team. I actually said that when I went, I'm like, this is your first time as a team playing together, correct? And they're like, yeah, it is actually. Samurai is an established, an established Street Fighter League, uh, Street Fighter player, as well as a Street Fighter League player. Uh, you have Nasser, who is definitely no stranger to the team format. They've been in the team seat before. This time, they have a new team member, though. They have a play style that they might not be too familiar with, and kind of getting that to work out with your team play style might be a little difficult, right? Because Angry Bird and Big Bird, they play each other all the time. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's more about that new element, which is Samurai, who is a very strong player at this mm -hmm. point, but there's still a dynamic for you to work out. And then you go over to the UIU side, right? You do have Kami. Kami is the newcomer here when it comes to Street Fighter League, as well as Oil King. But the team itself has been a team for a very long time. UIU has been a strong, collaborative team for a very long time. You can tell, by the way, Oil King presents himself and is just so familiar with both Kami as well as JB. As we get back into this next match, we're going to see what characters are we going to get from both of these guys. And the G has made his debut, that sick UIU skin. So Big Bird busting out the G. One of me personally, I'm going to tell you guys right now. This character's a problem, okay? Characters, if, 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 if your kid comes in tomorrow and they say, hey, Ma, I'm playing G, you better tell him, not in my house. You want to make Tasty Steve proud, you don't play G, okay? Character's super strong, but I've very rarely seen the matchup of Seth versus G, but here we go. Nice buffer with the stand light kick, gets the dash punch as well as the power up. That's going to make those fireballs a little more problematic to deal with. And also, I feel like one of the things in this matchup that helps G out a lot. Oh, without a doubt. Look at how much more he's controlling, or excuse me, that Big Bird is controlling that kind of neutral space with that fireball, right? Forcing Oil King to make these decisions, kind of like these awkward decisions, right? So trying to go in for like a, a normal buffer into Hecaton Freeze. I don't know how much that's going to do against the likes of uh, G when it comes to his fireball pressure, those normals like Roundhouse. Mm -hmm. I also feel like G has very good tool, anti air tools, right? An uh, early call out on, on an anti air can definitely help out. G in some of these situations, and the EX finds this mark. Yo, using V trigger too? That's the expert V trigger. You gotta be a pro. You put that on your resume, I'm hiring you instantly. Yeah, you, I run V trigger too, Seth. Excuse me? Get this guy a job now. 
jump in. We've seen the empty jumps work out a lot, and Seth's jump light is pretty good for Carl's cross-ups, especially in the corner. Axe kick pressure once again. No more levels on the side of G, and that's oh, that jump light once the again. The cross-up actually hit. Oh, oh wrong? Off. It's okay. EX Hecaton Kareez, again, catching Big Bird off guard two times over in that single round in game one. Let's see how much uh, Oil King's gonna get away with it again this time. Oh yeah, caught the spin kick with that raw fierce, and here comes Big Bird. Ooh, no anti-airs no anti there. Uh, uh, some of the anti-airs, I feel like G has some of the best anti-airs when it comes to just normal butts. Nice buffer gets the EX, gonna get the corner this time around. Oh, come on, oh, oh, grab your hand to see it coming. Get scooped, don't get scooped again. I like the backup. There's the anti-air, what did I just say? You're dead. Yeah, option selected that throw was an excellent choice there from Big Bird. Adel tell the V-Skill too, if you saw it, you'll get it in job, huh? Command grab, fire then. Only get command grab immediately after. You can hear Angry Bird saying to use V-Skill more. If I'm, I, I could be oh. wrong. Uh-oh, nice air to air. Yep, there's that V-Skill usage. And I'm not sure if that V-Skill, you would have to time it pretty pretty good if you want to stop the anti-air. Oh, there that's, we go. that's I think exactly. that's the thing, right? He yeah. wants to make sure that Oil King does not get over G. Using that V-Skill, the hitbox from behind him keeps Seth in check. Not this time around. Carefully timing the jump. Damage Oda, Oda. or the mix. Damage or the mix. Mm -hmm. Oh, didn't see that. Yeah. I mean, he could up. go for both, Steve. Had he got that, had he got that combo correct, he would have still had Oki and the damage on board. But we'll see. He still has a lot to make up for. Sugar is on Ooh. deck. Tried to go for the activation. You saw the exchange. Uh, Adele, listen. Just V reversal the V trigger too. Keep the don't V reversal yep. anything. That's how I feel. Yep. Just yep. V reversal the ball itself. V yep. reversal, yep. not the V reversal the. Uh the V trigger too, so you might be able to activate it earlier. Because Angry Burst to learn not to view reverse over. Oh, nice, gets the crush. I like that on. from Kami. He's listening on the opponent. He's like, this is what they just told him to do, so do the opposite of that. Right, he said, you can do it early now. He's like, he's going to be looking for it. Do it early. What a punish. G's jab has a little bit of range, just a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's a solid poke for sure. Uh, having that kind of hitbox, I mean, it could also, like, kind of. Um, be a great buffer tool as well. Good anti air. Uh, this is exactly what I was Ooh. talking about with the anti air buttons. Here's an interrupt. Yeah, double dash to get the Oki. Forward throw this time. Dash. Oh, actually walks up. Great okay. block from Oil King. Oh, catches oh, okay. the back dash. Not able to make anything big come from it. There's the activation on the V trigger, too. Oh, good pressure. Good defense from Big Bird, though. But here comes the offense. Oil King. Oh, oh. the shimmy into the low forward. Roll forward, spin kick there from Oil King. Testing the patience of Big Bird. Again, Big Bird had that great sequence blocked against V-Trigger 2. But, again, Oil King still finds the opening. Awkward exchange there. Corner. He's still yep. two usage. EX. Uh. Mm -hmm. Going to get it more damage as well. Get I wonder if he went for EX Mad Cradle, if it would have done stun. Either way, does get the Axe Kick stun anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see what I'm really made of. So much damage left on the board. This character is ridiculous when it comes to damage. I'm it's going. the end. Dead. Okay. All right. Mario King. Now, I can tell you right now, it's news to me, Big Bird having a G, feeling comfortable enough to play in the Street Fighter League, right? That's, that's the thing. And one of the first things that I feel like every team learned is to always have a backup. I'm interested to understand this call to Ooh. make it G a little more. Maybe it's to deal with, you know, you still have team um, all in that has a prominent G on it with 801 Strider. Right. I mean, we'll, we'll get there when we get there, man. I'm, I'm actually curious to see why this, this pick was made from Big Bird as well. But mm -hmm. here we are. Big jumping, okay. Decides to go for the axe kick instead. Great pace all around, though. I like the backup was very patient on the side of Oil King. Mm. I like that. What a call out gets the Ooh. EX. Raw Twin Fang. Actually caught the counter hit, but either way. Out mm. of the corner is Big Bird, and now this is where G gets the shine. No, missed time the meaty. Backing off, activation. The Oil King catches Seth midway oh. through, and the jump. Oil King knew. You know what? With that amount of life, I would have taken that risk as well. That was a very solid read on the side of Oil King looking at match point. 
This is uh, not looking too good right now for NASA. Angry Bird's gonna have a lot of pressure going for it. Gonna have to deal with potentially two UIU team members alone. Oh, nice standing heavy kick. Confirm gets the crouching medium punch, goes into the EX dash punch. Wow, that, that I thought that was throw. That's 10 fierce. Big old button to buffer behind also. Oh, axe kick. I love the mix-up. Sometimes you do it, sometimes you don't. Block, no punish, because we're making it safe, and you got to be aware. Wheel kick to the corner. Yeah. Oh, oh just a right a regular Just walk throw. up forward throw. That was actually a, a very dangerous situation. For the very right? safe. Right? Very low forward in the trigger was it. Oh. Okay, that heavy jump. Kick. That would have been an option select like behind it. But either way, EX spin kick. Already into the corner. Forward throw. Nice block on the low there. Almost looking like an overhead. That's a down forward roundhouse. We're Double forward axe kick. I love the way Big Bird just got out of that corner. Great anti-air to follow up. And just inching. Oh, the jump. Oh. Have to be careful with those forward moving normal. Oh, that's it. That's more than enough. Gets to confirm. Oil King defeating Big Bird. UIU. Did he give him a high five? I, wish I, I, think, so. I think he gave him like the, the long distance, the social distance dap. You can't be mad at Oil King, honestly. He is the, I think he's like one of the nicest guys. Oh, yeah, most definitely. If you look, if you guys can hear the influence of Oil King just constantly pumping up the team. That's exactly what you want from a team member. We've already seen the importance, how strong it is to have a dominant, somebody, a cheerleader, somebody who's gonna support you no matter what and give you top tier influence as well as like strats. That's Oil King. I mean, not saying JB's not gonna do that as well or that Kami's not gonna do it, but for consistent cheerleading, you go to Oil King. For consistent, like coaching, you go to Oil King. I'm, and on top of that, he's super nice too. And you can't be mad at that. And my man always has his knees out. You can't. You, I'm just saying, he's stand-up guy. I feel like guy. he's gonna come out with a pair of shorts one week, and it's gonna look exactly like this shirt. I'm actually <laughs> terrified about that, but you know, it's gonna be cool. All right, so it's gonna be Angry Bird up to bat for Team Nasser, the lone survivor. Uh, actually, kind of curious to see how he's gonna fare off against who is it? Like what, Oil King and Kami. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be the Seth Mirror. I feel like all the way through, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, look, if that's the only thing that can happen at this point, and you have to fight two separate strong sets as the lone team survivor in the first, this is gonna be, this is definitely gonna be tough. Channeling his inner samurai, let's see if he can pull off this two-man victory. And again, on the other side, UIU. Let's see if they can get their first win. Here Kami being finally. first. Kami being first. Getting that victory versus samurai. Oh, the delayed crowd strong as well. And the counter hit exclusive. Oh, was that? oh man. Abigail. Look at the damage. <laughs> I thought it. Oh, no, I always my. mix that up, dude. I always think it's like Abigail punching. It's actually just Seth. It's just Seth. It's just Seth. Get yeah. bulky. Get big on him. Yeah. Keep going. I love you. Yo, the perfect. <laughs> dude, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but Oil, Oil King, King is literally is, pumping I up comedy by saying, you know what? I love you. <laughs> You're doing great. It's <laughs> we need a coach like that. Honestly. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oil King calling out the punishes and for I, his team. See, I like that route so much better. Right? You get the forward fierce, you're sacrificing a little bit of damage, but you still get the Oki and the double dash. You get so much of a presence with Axe that. Kick. Angry Bird Angry Bird turning on the defense. Turn on the offense, excuse me. Inside. Oh. Gil chilling in the back. Oh, nice EXDP. Oh. So crouch jab, activate off the target, forward throw. How'd you do that? Oh, that's gonna clear. Oh, that. Oh. Mm, and you can hear Oil King in the background. He said, "Why would you do that?" Definitely said, "Why did you do that?" All right, round number three, first game. Yeah, either if it was a, if an intentional critical art or even like an EX uppercut, I think it still would have been checkmate, right? So, uh, either way, it's unfortunate that again Oil King now down in the deficit when it comes to critical art. But, He's doing just fine without it. Mm -hmm. Calls out the punish. Oh, low forward. Low forward spin kick yet again. Yes, I like that punish. It is minus eight. Tries to bait out something with the neutral jump. Oh, that was oh. a mixed. That was a missed axe kick for sure. 
without a doubt. And Kami not taking advantage of it. Angry Bird now trying to apply this pressure, but once he loses that pressure, gets out of the way. Great with punish. Wow. I like that a lot. Dash up, double crouch short, straight in the cradle into CA. Yeah. That's going to be Maybe the first game. Maybe I should game. throw more. I think he's scared of uh, DP, yes. shimmy and damage. So I, I, think, throw I think you're doing fine on offense. What you need to do is that um, you are panicking too much on defense, so he's reading whatever you want to do. Like As soon as you get V-Trigger, he knows you want to activate. So just try your hardest to literally go against what mm. your mind is telling you to do, like during V-Trigger, like to activate. It's true. But I want to see how this plays out. Yeah, that's minus two. It's fine. Use the, the heavy kick, spin kick, just in case if you're that close. But there is a significant gap between the normal Ooh. and that. Oh, yeah. The Tandon Engine standoff. <laughs> the Tandon Engine showdown. Mm -hmm. The old Wild West, the Tandem Ninjas. Oof. I like that check with the crouching heavy kick. Nice confirm off the low medium kick. Great throw. Great. The delay again. Say. Oh, he missed the opportunity for the target combo. Now it's Angry Birds time to shine. Yes, gets the side switch as well. Dash up two times over the trade. Hecaton carries. Oof. 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 Yo, I Steve. thought I thought the I thought okay. Steve. I thought Seth was going to live the teleport to the other side. Ugh. I oh forgot, my I, I, god! I forgot about V Trigger for a split second. Wow, what a whiff punish. I'm sounding like one of your Twitch alerts. Oh right. my god! <laughs> that low forward has been doing mileage for Angry Bird. Oh wow. Shimmy almost successful. 80% successful. No damage, but the threat was there. Yeah, Trigger is winding down, but he's not going to try to force an opening, right? He is at a life deficit, but does have full critical art. Just trying to find some sort of opening against Angry Bird, just walking towards Kami, right? Or at least holding his ground. I, I like love that. the patience, though. Kami taking an instance to try to get back control of this neutral. Oh, oh big time no. punish. Angry Bird making it hurt. That's the second time. <laughs> That's the second time we've seen Angry Bird punish the crouching heavy punch, that slide. Kami going down to Angry Bird, the lone survivor of Team NASA right now. But now we have Oil King coming up to see if he can secure the first victory for UIU. He's not really pressing much in neutral. His neutral is just so mostly dash or axiac. Samurai's just chilling. He's theorizing. And uh, he'll play V-Skill too, huh? Uh, if I knew how to block the V-Trigger setups, I'd come up. Did we? I hope I hope y'all heard that. I hope I hope y'all heard Angry Yo, Bird. Yo, Angry knew, Bird. I wish I it was a camera to, on him when he said that. If I know that. how to block the V Trigger Two setup, then I would. I, boop. I, I would. I would mess boop. Up. <laughs> I'm trying to block y'all. I want you to. Yo, Angry Bird, showing the angry side of things. <laughs> oh man, I see. I love the fact that we can get the the microphone audio in from the team. Angry Bird sizing up the competition a little bit. Man, I love the fact that JB is giving like the, the actual NFL coach. He's covering his mouth while he's saying, he's like, yo, you need to make sure that you block the blah, blah, blah. Oh, he, did, so that, he so. did that like season two mm -hmm. as well because there would be a moment where Smug would actually like take the headset off and lean over to hear what they're saying. That's when they started, you know, covering the, their mouths in the microphone. He's like, all right, well, this is what we got to do because of Smug. And I'm excited to see him play again, back at it again with Street Fighter League season three. I'm mm -hmm. excited to see all of these teams compete. But as we stand right now, it's uh, the finale between Team Nasser and Team UYU. All right, who's going to get the first team victory here for Street Fighter League Season 3? We've already went down to the team captains and one on the side of Oil King going up against Angry Bird. This is going to be good. Round one. Here we go. Seth on Seth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oof. Great cradle right there, Dragon Punch. Back throw. Awareness on the side of Angry Bird right now. Oh, wow. Tries to go for the punish on the standing roundhouse, and it didn't get anything. Look at the stun, and it's already completed. First round, Angry Bird with a perfect. The amount of confidence coming from Team NASA right now through their anchor. Yo, just walks, trying to keep that corner. Confirm, crouching medium punch. Oh! 
opted not to go for the Hecatonkeries, despite already having the corner, the, the, the stun was actually right there. Yeah, it was very significant. And then corners himself, Oil King. Oh, oh no! Yeah, you Back gotta see throw. those counter hits. If you get the counter hit off of forward medium punch, you are able to connect with the light into Mad Crater. These throws set up the worst situation. Because now, the stun's going up, and that's the fourth throw in the world. Wow. Just can't this all chip Oh, out. yeah, you can't get out of that. Yeah. You cannot get out of that. Because after that punch, that V-Trigger 2 follow-up, or V-Trigger 1 follow-up, you are plus 2, right? So kind of, That ultra, that super was kind of delayed, right? Yeah. yeah. Because if I did it immediately, uh, he could V-Reverse it. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. He definitely could have V-Reverse it right there. Great call-out. That's why you delay it. So smart. Like I said, best of the best. Creme de la creme when it comes to the Street Fighter talent. Here. Oh, the V-Skill punish? That was so godlike. Oil King starting it up. More damage on the table. About half stun on the side of Big Bird. And the confirm once again. Oh. Almost base the axe kick. Jump. Big jump. Yes, sir. Switching sides, getting a full stun combo. Not going to be the end of things, but right now, in control, Oil King. There's a tech trigger on Ooh. the table. Activate off the crouching heavy punch. Uh oh mm. Big oh, mistake. No punish no. on the side of Oil King, but it's, it's just okay, fine. It's okay, it. Next round. Whew, that could have been sloppy. That could have been uh, a bunch of spaghetti. Everywhere. Mom would have been mad about that. As long as it's not on the sweater already. But he's nervous. Four throw, no throw, but yeah. Man, five throws in a row and steal. Oil King came back to steal the round. In a bad situation, jump in once again. That should be stunned. No. Ooh, not quite, but one more will do it. EX Mad Cradle. Okay. okay. Once again, not able to confirm these hits. You see a few ducks oh. right there to call it out. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was, that was mm -hmm. actually wild. That scenario, I still can't believe he pressed the button. So after that, again, forward medium punch is negative. It is not your turn afterwards. It is minus two. But still managed to get a counter hit. There was a delay there from Oil King. Back throw, back to mid-screen. Oil King Sony needs it around. Oh, yeah. Just in range to punish that axe kick. Oil King needs this round. He needs this round at this point. Ooh. Oh. No anti air gets the axe kick, holds up, gets to confirm there's going to be a combo conversion. This is a good thing for Oil King. And a dash back from Angry Bird, predicting that Oil King will go for the throw after that Oki setup. Switch it between the axe kick pressure, but chipping away as Angry Bird. This is a dangerous situation. V skill oh, almost oh, oh. on the table, and another hit, another throw could do it and seal this victory for Nasser. Okay, now oil King oil in trouble. King. Yeah, he's stuck. He cannot activate V trigger. Oh, and the throw nice and easy. Oil King not able to clutch the victory for you while you had an amazing start with that victory from Kami. But Nasser brings it back. Angry Bird clutches it out to get their first victory here at SFL. Samurai didn't even have to do any work. He said, hey, you're a team Nasser now. Take a seat. Relax, if you would. Don't relax, but. <laughs> at, least, at least for the time being, right? So, again, big ups to both uh, Nasser and UIU. Again, Nasser taking the first win of the season. Uh, a lot of hopes there in Angry Bird as Big Bird and Samurai looked on. Again, you guys had to watch each and every one of those matches. I'm actually quite impressed with the amount of time it took for Angry Bird to have such an effective set. And that goes for Oil King and Kami as well. Again, this is that character that's highly talked about in this season. Yeah. And without a doubt in my mind, every one of these players at least has a backup set. Well, I mean, it's starting to look that way, right? I mean, if you look at how even Kami came out of the gate playing with uh, Seth, I was like, wow. Kami's got a Seth, that's good, because we were thinking that Akuma was going to be the, the purpose of this band anyway, right? But then, right behind that, you have a whole team. You have Oil King, who's also ready to run the Seth. I think that's smart, because we've been in Street Fighter League, where there have been these underdeveloped characters, who some of the players aren't looking at, are taking too seriously. I mean, look, look at Poison. I am not ashamed to say I would do the exact same thing. You need to have a pocket set at this point in time. And even more so, it's still an additional character you can have under your belt. In Street Fighter League, that is worth its weight in gold. Which is not, you know, it doesn't actually weigh anything, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs>
it, it makes perfect sense, Steve. Now, we kind of talk about the breakdown between UIU and Nasser. Again, it, it turned out to be a 3-2 on the side of Nasser, but we look back at how it was in game one, right? Very, very close set throughout the entirety of this series. I think UIU's choice to ban Akuma first was actually uh, pretty on point, right? They wanted to make sure that they make their statement known. It's like, we're not afraid of the Samurai. But again, Angry Bird just showing how much of a veteran he really is taking it over that entire team. Very, very impressive stuff. In fact, we do have Rob TV standing by with Angry Bird, part of Team Master. Let's take a look at what he has to say. Thanks, guys. I am here with the amazing, the incredible Angry Bird. This is actually your first ever Street Fighter League match, and this is what you show up with in OCV? How do you feel right now? I mean, I feel happy to do it, but... You know, I, I, at, the, at my first match versus JB, I felt like I would lose because I have no experience in the poison matchup. Yeah. But when I beat JB, like the other matchups like Seth Seth, I've been playing with Bunk a lot. So I got the knowledge and the matchup down. Mm -hmm. So I was feeling confident in this matchup. How did you feel when you saw your teammates going down? It was an interesting situation where, because of the way the bands uh, panned out, they banned Akuma. Actually, did the Akuma ban shock you guys? Yeah, I mean, we expected that because bo both me and Big Bird has two strong characters, but Samurai like has a shaky second character. So they would target Mikey, of course. Yeah. But uh, when they lost, actually, I, lo I, I felt a heavy weight on my shoulder. Yeah. So that's what, I, that's what I don't like about this like, type of tournaments. <laughs> because when, you, when your teammates lose, then you have to do it by yourself, yeah. which is more, more pressuring than individual tournaments. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But either way, with all of that pressure, you show exactly what a professional Street Fighter player is, especially somebody that's at your level. And much respect to you, man. That was amazing. So Angry much. Bird, ladies and gentlemen. That's the kind of confidence I like to see coming from Team Master and their debut of Street Fighter League coming in with that hot OCV from Angry Bird. Looking forward to plenty more matches from them as well as Team UIU. But we still have plenty more matches to go for this week. Angry Bird talking about how confident he felt after taking out Oil King. Just that's something crazy to me. Uh, saying that he felt confident going forward says that, you know, maybe there's not as many threats on the UIU team that he sees coming from his end on Team Nasser. Samurai falling to the side in this first game does say a lot, but it still is a great showing by what Kami can bring to the table, even though they didn't get a chance to finish out very well. I'm still still waiting to see what this season holds for both of these teams, even though UIU didn't take it. Shout outs to Team Nasser on their first victory here in Street Fighter League. With battle number one out of the way, we do set ourselves up for quite the showdown. It's going to be Team All In going up against Team Alpha 3. It's going to be the clash of Street Fighter League, and it's only week one of season three. Again, the reason why I mention it is because, again, we got Punk as the captain of Alpha 3 and Idom the captain of All In. It's going to be the run back from Capcom Cup. When we return from this break, we're going to see him throw down here at Street Fighter League. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody, to Street Fighter League Season 3. We got ourselves quite the showdown between Team Alpha 3 with Captain Punk, CJ Truth, the nephew, going up against Team All In, which consists of Captain IDOM, 801 Strider, and newcomer SKZ. This is going to be a barn burner of a match. Absolutely excited to see it. Steve, your thoughts? So let's talk about Alpha 3, Nephew, Punk, CJ, right? They banned G right out of the gate. I Look, I already told you how I feel about G. You banning G is always a good start, but it's also the fact that you're fighting up against 801 Strider. 801 Strider is arguably the best G in the country, and you can put him up in top contention with the world-level Gs, but you still have CJ Truth as well as Punk. What are some of your thoughts? You tell me. What are you looking at first here? They've gotten a G to make sure 801 Strider is not a threat. What is, what is the next thing that you're thinking about in this matchup? A couple things, right? 801 Strider, I want to see who he picks as a secondary. And yeah. then, of course, number two, with All In, who they decided to put in the character order as well as what bands are in place. I believe they went with the order 801 Strider, SKZ, and IDOM uh, as anchor. And I believe they are targeting Nephew as their band of choice as they pick Colleen to maybe, I guess... They want to target Nephew, right. perhaps seeing that he might be the weakest link or to just test him and maybe get this momentum going. Again, it's one of those things where it's just like, I wish I could hear the words of what All In we're talking about when it comes to these decisions as well. Because again, all of these players, all the players in Alpha 3 are absolute terrors. I mean, um, Nephew actually just won one of the qualifiers yep. uh -huh. for CPT Online North American West with Colleen, right? He's already going to the big dance. So I'm kind of curious to see who he has in mind as a backup character. Well... For more words, we have them from the captain. It's going to be Punk and Rob TV's interview. Punk the God, the Alpha, CJ <laughs> Truth, the Italian V-neck Dawn, and the king of TikTok, the self-proclaimed king of TikTok, and I do co-sign it. He not so Big Neff. No, no, he said that. He said that. He told me one day. I don't think I, I don't said think that. He ever would. Yeah, I, I think, think you just made that nephew, up. Nephew you definitely did. told me that. I also think more people think that, so it's not really self-proclaimed. No, I said, and I agree. Oh, okay. So yeah, he yeah. definitely is the king, Thanks. easily. So all of you guys are former captains. That's something that's interesting. I think you guys are the only team here, if I'm not mistaken, that are all former Street Fighter League captains. Uh, Punk, obviously, you're still the captain of this team. CJ and nephew. Does it feel different filling into a different role? Uh, I think just this season, because like previous seasons, the captain was like just the strongest player by far. Yeah. But everyone on every team is strong this season. So I just feel like it's a different vibe overall. I don't think so. I think it's kind of the same thing. You, uh, you're just a player trying to do a good job for your team. You know? There's a squirrel trying to get a nut. <laughs> you know, there's there's probably some uh, wisdom there. I, I don't know yet, but uh, I'll figure it out. All right, so uh, coming into this season, before the roster changes, <laughs> before the roster changes, there were a lot of people who batted in an eye, especially at the nephew pick, you know, when you mm -hmm. pick your team and everything. I know I've talked to you personally, and you feel like people criminally underrate mm -hmm. nephew. Uh, and now it seems like you had a whole lot of foresight because are you guys the I think you're the only team who didn't have any changes or one of the only two teams who didn't have any changes uh, due to COVID and everything. Uh, now, what do you guys think about your team and what went into your thought process when, when it came to picking uh, Nephew and CJ? I feel like since I live with Nephew, right, we live together, people mm -hmm. might think it's a biased pick, but you know, I play nephew, and if I tell him something, he'll always listen. He don't, like, argue back because, you know, some people do that. So I think he's just, like, overall, you know, it's some good energy on the team. So, you know, I feel like in a team tournament, you want good players and you want good energy. And that's where CJ come in at the best. You know, my man Steve Rogers right here <laughs> in America. America's ass. Yeah, yeah, my man, he come in with all the energy. You ain't, unless... He get a character he can't DP, you know the energy gonna stay. Yeah, that to that yeah, come out. Yeah, the energy stays. As long as it ain't that, he's straight. <laughs> the energy gonna stay super positive, and you know I feel like that's all we need, right? Like positive energy and some whiff punishes is 
You know, that's the name of our team right there. Bro, I feel like a whole lot of people actually don't think about that when it comes to Street Fighter League, but that obviously shows that you're a Street Fighter League veteran. How long have you guys actually known each other? Because mm -hmm. so far, I feel like behind the scenes, the way you guys are chilling, you know, out there in the rec room, we, I just saw a nephew with his feet up eating fruit <laughs> snacks. Am I lying? Yeah, you're not lying. Dead ass. He had his feet up. I've seen like other teams are looking all damn focused and shit. I mean, and stuff. And nephew. <laughs> <laughs> Nephew just had his feet up eating fruit steaks and all that. How uh, how long have you guys actually known each other? I know you live with Nephew now, but how long have you guys been friends? So me and CJ probably known each other me since like 2013, 2014, really long time. And Nephew was like one of my favorite players to watch in Street Fighter. I feel like I was the first person to give him his props, you know? Yeah. When, he, when you Colleen were, was I trash that. I that. and she only had V-Trigger 1, my man Nephew was out there putting in work on these fools, you know? So... You know, I think Nephew was my friend since the beginning, before he was talking to me, and he was mad quiet. <laughs> I was already his friend. In my, in my mind, I was already his friend. But I don't know how it was with Nephew. You know, we played in a lot of tournaments when we first, well, before I knew who he was, yeah. we played in a lot of tournaments. A lot? And yeah, we actually played like in three rankings, Back to back to back. Yeah, it was like every single pool. I just had to play him first or second round. <laughs> just one last thing before we wrap up. I just have to at least get to this. You guys are growing up against Team All In. Hmm. Obviously, the marquee matchup there that a lot of people want to hmm. see is going to be Punk versus Adam. He did get the last meeting that you guys had, which is a very big one to say the least in Capcom Cup. Do you have any increased motivation to beat him here? Nah, I don't really care because I feel like the, the record is so highly in my favor that it doesn't really matter. And I feel like Idom is like a lot more nervous and scared to, to play against me than I am Damn. scared to play against him. So but I don't even care about playing against Idom because I'm just hoping one of them smoke him. So I ain't got to worry about that. So that's, that's my plan. I'm just trying to chill and get carried to this victory, you know, today. So, you know, I'm just hoping that we get this clean sweep, which I'm sure we will. Spoken like a true alpha. And uh, I wish you guys the best of luck. I'm looking forward to you guys' match. There's three of us. But you were speaking. <laughs> <laughs> said, spoken like a true alpha. You were and there you have words from the captain. You see Rob TV calling him out on how loose they are. We've seen this punk before in earlier seasons of Street Fighter League. It did not stop him from getting a ring. I mean, they are former teammates. They know each other. I feel like that's a good feeling to have going into your first team battle here in Street Fighter League. But who they're going up against, uh, who they're targeting, G801 Strider, talk to us a little bit about that team. So you could, they kind of mentioned in their interview how comfortable they are with this uh the format of Street Fighter League yeah. as they are veterans. They are past captains, right? Yeah. But you also have some captains of your own in the side of All In, right? 801 Strider and Idom. Not to mention the wild card of SKZ. The only history we have in his performance of Street Fighter V was back in 2017 mm, in an online true. qualifier. He's back to reign terror with Seth since his performance in 2020 in the Southeast Asia, Asia uh, online qualifiers as well. Already made it to the big dance of Capcom Cup. So absolutely ecstatic to see what kind of factor he brings in the dynamic between 801 Strider and Idom. So actually curious about that myself, but I believe Rob TV actually has a few words with Team All In. Take a look. So Gus, starting with you, you actually, you are on Team All In and mm -hmm. last season with uh, Team Storm, you guys actually had a similar concept. It was you, Joey 900, and uh, Tommy Two Step, Big mm -hmm. Step. And you guys all were pretty, like, you had pretty aggressive characters, the scumbaggery. What are the chances that you're on a team like this again? Does it just attract to you or what? You don't choose the scumbag life. The scumbag life chooses you. you know? Bro, season two of Laura, <laughs> G. Hey, to be honest, like, these are some very respectable characters here. I agree. I mean, Laura. She, she's got stubby normals, man. She's got to whiff punish you. Seth has to jump sometimes. And G, you know, like, I have to play some, some neutral. Play I some actually want, I think we should use this time on Street Fighter League while the world is watching to say, Capcom, please nerf every character that these guys play here. I mean, I agree with you now. Poison does need some nerfs. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. Laura could use some buffs, though. Buffs? Seriously? Yeah. Okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So travel restrictions made it so that you guys lost uh, Phenom. Mm -hmm. um, 
And you guys went and picked up SKZ, who burst onto the scene recently. We'll get to that soon. But what actually went into the decision for you guys to pick up SKZ? The original concept for the team was, like I said, all in. So it was like, you wanted uh, balls to the wall kind of character. Okay, TOS. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I feel like Seth's a good uh, character for that, and SKZ is really good from watching uh, the CPT Southeast Asia. SKZ, how do you feel about your uh, your teammates? How do you feel about being on Street Fighter League? Um, I actually am getting introduced to you uh, recently. Your Seth is amazing. I'm interested to see your secondaries. You. Uh, but yeah, how are you feeling about this whole experience? Um, I mean, it's been amazing so far. So when I first got the um, notification, I was really, really excited and being able to travel here amidst like even with COVID restrictions like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me and I'm really glad to be here. Well the last time yeah. that you got uh, a once in a lifetime opportunity was just a few weeks ago uh, when we had Southeast Asia 1 and you actually came out victorious. How did it feel when you landed that last hit to make it in the Capcom Cup? I actually jumped off my seat and popped <laughs> off. Although nobody could see it because I was at home. I felt that every round that I took, it was like a sigh of relief for me. And when I finally took that last round, I was like, I finally done it. So yeah. Well, well he's trying yeah. to say respectfully, <laughs> is that was free. That's what it sounded like to me too. And look, I wasn't going to put any words in his mouth. Hey, but he was being all super humble. respectful. And then he's like, you know, even though it was six rounds six straight. Down, by the way. <laughs> Six. Yeah, like that's how like it was a straight cook. Mm -hmm. uh, so the last thing I want to get into is Adam. You guys, uh, obviously, you're going up against Team Alpha Three. A big matchup everyone wants to see is the Adam versus Punk runback. He was just in here saying that you know he's not too pressed on it because his record against you is so strong and everything. Do you think that you just caught him that one time at Capcom Cup? Or do you think something actually changed to the point where you can get him consistently? I'm not too hung up on it. Like, people always bring up the, oh, who's who's better, Punk or Idom? Idom always loses to him. Honestly, it, I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about the Twitch moths. I don't care about the trolls. I don't care about the people in their mom's Ooh. basement. Ooh. I, I, in their mom's basement. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to play at the end of the day. How are you guys feeling about your chances against Alpha 3? I think we got a pretty good shot. We got a pretty respect, like we, like Strider said, respectable team. We play fair card, yeah. So I mean, it's we're just you know gonna outplay them, you know, I just mean, pure and honest, work hard working, hard work. Yeah. Oh my team. goodness, you guys These can't are some make coal me mining this characters, league. man. All right, they guys. They go out of work. They bust their back. You know, <laughs> honest day of work, cheating no one. Go to church every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck with you guys matching. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys cook up. I, I don't know what he means when he says he finds himself on scumbag teams. Didn't Wasn't he the captain last season? He picked his own teammates. He picked his own teammates. Not only that, you need to start looking at the players on the team and the captain. And then personally, I'm just going to say it was 801 Strider might be <laughs> – the sleaze ball that he's talking about. He's looking in the mirror. This is a meme all the way. Hey, it's you. And he's just pointing at himself. That's exactly what's happening. Uh, a little more, just a little more padding this time around, I'm going to say. But it's a lot of padding because you have IDOM right behind you. You spoke about the wild card nature of SKZ. I feel like these are both things that you need to look at. 801 Strider, I consider him a wild card only because you never know what power level you're getting. Every time we see 801 Strider, he comes back at a stronger level. Then that's not even the main caveat of this team. You have Captain IDOM, the CPT Capcom Cup. I got a costume in the game champion. And we're getting into our next match already. I like this pick already. Nephew going with a Lucia. And surprisingly, actually, I take it all back. Not even surprising. 801 Strider going with Unga Bunga Yuri. And he's talked about this so many times on Twitter. He's like, this character, mm -hmm. it's just for me. Mm -hmm. I like to be a degenerate too. I play G. This is the perfect transition. I don't know who would have saw. Like, I'm pretty sure I've seen him play. Lu like, I've seen him him play Lucia before, right? I'm yeah, thinking yeah. that we're gonna see 801 Strider pull out the Lucia, and instead we get the Urian. But on the other side, we have the Lucia. This is crazy. This is what I like to see: the representation of these characters, right? I mean, 
there were a good representation, good amount of uh, representation for Yorian, but Lucia barely any. Yeah, a lot of people feel like she doesn't do enough damage. How you have to resource her meter is a lot more difficult than most. And on top of that, when you're contending with some of these other characters, Ooh. it's not gonna oh. be as easy. Okay, confirm with the double jab. Okay, activate after the sweep plus hold that. Out of there, yes sir. Avoiding all sorts of threats from the Aegis Reflector, but still has one more on deck. Throw, Power not bomb. dead. Watch that overhead. CA's on the table. You gotta be careful about overextending and a little more trigger on top of it. That's the end of it. Just trying to chip away. Needs to be careful of that tackle though, because you're at that Ooh. rate crouch short. Actual footsies. Mm. 81 Strider got those. He also has himself the first round of game one. Talking about scumbaggery. Switching to the Urian. I don't know why I'm on the team with all these scumbags. I'm just going to switch to a character that's giving me and a lot of other people problems. He did it to himself, man. Still Both. not the scumbag, though. Ooh. Yeah, nice counter hit conversion. Okay. EX busts out there. Uppercut there from the nephew. I love how she's able to play the Fireball War, though. Very unique when it comes to the world of Street Fighter. Oh, wow. Standing heavy punch confirmed to keep the corner. Ugh. Forward throw, retaining this pressure, back-to-back -back throws. Go for a third one. No, instead tries to get a button. Ooh, oh, he gets button? a headbutt instead. Out of the corner, EX uppercut. Get off me. I can do it too. Sweep, activate, tries to go for the Ooh. throw. EX chariot tackle uh -oh. for the chase. Man you in the mirror. Dead. Yeah, he is dead in a lot, so I think he can wait and check his dead. Mm -hmm. So you don't get much damage, but I think you can stop him from dead and you just grab him a little bit more. All right. All right. Yeah, also, when he has V trigger and there's like a tech throw or like you finish a block string or something, he's going to EX tackle. Like, he, he doesn't have much comfort with the character, so he's going to try to force a V trigger situation. Both of the, the remaining team members able to talk, put in their two cents. I'm actually kind of curious how nervous this KC is feeling his first time right. in this kind of position. Looking on as 801 Strider continues this barrage, getting an offensive st a situation started. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. Mm -hmm. Catches him reaching his time around. Headbutt to keep the pressure back to the middle of the screen. Screen, 801 Strider in control. They were talking about him dashing up in a lot of these instances, and you see him commit to the sweep, activate on trigger. Still life Ooh. deficit in favor of, Ur of Urian right now. 801 Strider with the knee drop. The violent knee drop. It's not even a regular knee drop. It's a violent knee drop. And it was an EX violent knee drop to take the round. This match could be over if 801 Strider can get one more round. Ooh, wow. what a whiff punish. And the confirm there. Yes, sir. Here comes Neff. Applying that pressure with that stand medium punch to keep himself at plus. Looking for that frame trap over and over again. But still, Strider finding his way out. Ugh, EX tackle. Finding the mark. And again, confirm there from Neff. Okay. Once again, these interrupts from Nephew are starting to add up. Life in favor of Lucia right now. Crouching short, that was definitely looking for an activation. He didn't take the bait, goes for the throw. Activate coming up soon, I'm telling you right now. 100%. Boom. Urian, yep, they're taking turns. Oh no, oh, he could have got a big conversion, possibly the kill. Tries it again, finds the mirror once more, does not convert, power bomb! And that's gonna be 801 Strider. 801 Strider takes it over Nephew, first game running the Lucia. I like it. Being the target of the band, not worrying one bit, full confidence himself in himself and the character. Uh, the way he was playing, the way he was moving out there, doing uh, wonders with, just doing Urian things, really. There were so many instances where he would headbutt out of like strings just to kind of test Nephew's reactions. That kind of uh, erratic play really throws off certain players. I didn't think it was going to throw off Nephew, but he still managed to get the kill. So, one, you have to look at the fact that there was no Colleen to be played, right? Sure. Now, this is very, now this is one of the things of Street Fighter League that you have to pay attention to. Those backup characters are instrumental in making sure that your team stays afloat. Because if they can target a character, regardless who your team is made up of, you don't want to put all that pressure on somebody like Punk. And even if he is that good and he can handle it, why would you do that? Then you still have CJ Truth, who is also a clutch player, why would you do that? I understand the changeup, but that pressure, the way that Gustavo 801 Strider was playing, you were right. It was very sporadic. Even Punk talking about him dashing up and just waiting. The random headbutts. I don't mean to call it random, but 
I had no idea when he was going to do headbutt. And it was very spaced out to the point where it was very, like, lackluster. He was waiting in a lot of these instances, waiting for the opponent to pull the trigger. And look what happened. Somebody like Nephew can be beat by something like that, especially when they're not familiar, especially when they don't have a character that they 100% comfortable with. 801 Strider making an amazing play coming out, regardless, regardless of the character it is. I will have to say, again, this is only week number one. There's still plenty of time for Nephew to grow and learn from these losses. But we'll see what happens between Punk and SKZ. They are uh, chatting up a little bit. I'm actually kind of curious to see how this turns out. Because we still have CJ Truth and IDOM waiting in the rafters or the next seat behind him. Because, again, when we saw this set, it was actually ridiculous. We didn't even see. We didn't even know it was going to be set up like that. Yeah. To let you guys know, that's actually godlike. But now... We have SKZ coming up, going up against Steve, the captain go! of Alpha Three. So Can this is what I this is what I'm absolutely excited for. We've seen Punk time and time again Round play one. this character, right? Champion Fight. caliber character. Uh, but he's also dabbled with Seth time and time again mm -hmm. on uh, a CPT online format as well as on his own personal streams. Very much so well versed in what the character can do. This is a major matchup, I feel like. This is very telling for what we can expect for the season. I mean, both of these guys are playing their main. On top of that, we're getting our first look Ooh. at Punk playing Karen versus an unknown threat. This is e Every team should be looking at this match right now because it's going to be instrumental Ooh. in the future of Street Fighter League stun. Wow. Wow. Give me some meter on top of it. Not dead yet, but this mix-up coming. Uh, okay. A lot of meter. A lot of meter on the side. Cross. SKC and gets the cross up. Yes, sir. Nice and easy with the lights. If that wasn't enough, the Mad Cradle was right behind it. First round in game one goes to SKZ. And all off of that mix-up, right? Either a, a normal jump or an axe kick. Actually, uh -oh. Punk was baited into it. Went for the crouch fierce, but got stuffed. So, Jeremy, those are strong words. He was baited into it. He was baited into it. You're going to say Punk, the alpha, was baited into something? Don't you dare. Oh, okay. See, now he's changing up the timing. He's going as soon Ooh, as he sees something airborne. That is going oh, to hurt. Boy. And not only is it going to hurt, but it might cost you the round full CA on the table. I'm only going to spend a little bit. Ooh, I may have a lot of meter. I might have a lot of money as a character, but I know how to budget. Saving the rest of those bars for the rest of the first match. This is, oh, man, let me pay attention real quick. Do you see how fast Punk has adapted to the timing of SKZ's axe kicks? My man just throws out the crouch first with no fear. The name of the team is Alpha 3. He is the Alpha. Not looking like it right now, because he definitely got stunned and full CA on the table. We're going to spin meter. Yep, and that is going to hurt. That's not dead. Okay. That's so not dead. I don't think no, so. I don't I don't think so either. There's a lot of scaling behind it, but here's the thing. It sets him back to... Ow, look at the damage. Oh, my God. Oh, I would have spent that. I would have oh, spent no. that the extra sin hop. But what do I know? I'm not rich. We Karen. have the corner. We have Karen and V-Trigger and two bars. There might be a lot of damage on the table. SKZ finds an escape, but Ooh. still very aggressive with the axe kicks. Game one. SKZ with the first W versus Punk. All in, looking buff right now. You still have Idom. You can see him sitting comfortably right behind SKZ. I love that you called him a wild card because I feel like this is going to be one of the people that you're going to need to pay attention to. Do we have any idea what the backup character is? Who knows? Does the other team know? <laughs> to be honest with you, I actually talked to him backstage before he went on. I was like, hey, just in case you get banned, who do you use? He's like, well, it really depends on the person, but I have a good amount of characters in mind, so who knows? Okay, knockdown once again. And look at Punk. Offense just completely switched up this time around. You said he changed up the timing. And you can instantly tell that going into the second game, axe kick after the activation, and still has a lot of meter left. The reversal knocks a little timing off. Very little timing, but timing nonetheless. Lots of great life on the side. B-Skill cancel. Running B-Skill 2. B-Skill 2 with Seth is so good for getting corner carry in a lot of these combos. Oh. Dead. Oh, my. I really... I, so... Just to talk about SKZ's game plan a little bit because I am least familiar with SKZ. Using B skill 2 with Seth is going to give you a lot of carry. Uh, it does take you a little meter on top of uh, just to get damage in some of these instances. But being able to take a player like Punk to the corner and make him guess for a victory is perfect. Uh oh, getting what interrupted interval. now. Getting interrupted now. You can't use that B skill, I feel like, in, just in the opening. We saw the usage a little, little bit earlier by SKZ. But Punk's not going to let you keep getting away with that. Oh. Low forward, the second round looking a lot better. The second game looking a lot better. Activate, what an interrupt! Interrupt by Punk. 
Wake the up, EXP. Cradle, mm -hmm. yes sir. Gets the follow up with feature for one. Oh, oh, oh my what? God. I've never even seen that before. Stun? Stun him? Oh, no. Oh my God. SKZ finessing Punk, getting the round back. Wow, you reach, I teach. The mini pop up. Don't you dare call me imperfect. Oh man, let's go. Don't call Seth by its number, man. Oh boy. They confirm and the side switch. V skill. Getting himself a little bit of Back gauge on there. Man, Seth's ground control is so good. That low forward, just the guess of throw, and just those far reaching target combos completely working out right now. V reversal for Punk to get out of the corner. Oh. Tries to advance, eats an axe, kick, gets God. caught peeking. He is feeling it. XDP. All the momentum SKZ. going towards SKZ. One more hit. Watch the overhead. Nice crouch, fierce out of the corner. It's time for Punk to make this comeback happen. Full trigger. Oh, and the mm. trade for SKZ. Taking game number two. The season one classic and instantly team Alpha down two competitors. And Alpha is the Alpha of Alpha 3. Punk did not like that. Not one bit. Frustration already setting in as the team loses two key members. One being Nephew, the second being Punk. And Punk was playing his main. And now IDOM is coming up. The Capcom Cup 2019 champion is coming up against CJ. Oh my God, CJ what? has uh, this is the first lot week on of Street Fighter right League season three, and we are getting bangers. See, this is a tall. Yo, wait, CJ wait, wait. Did you see SKZ look back? Wait, wait. So, dude, my boy Punk is in shambles right now. He, he's crush countered glass all over the floor. You see SKZ look back at 801 Strider with the slyest of smirks. Yeah. Bro, he sat I, down, and it was like you saw somebody you know on public transportation. He looked back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Let's go. Hey, same route. You say it. You going? Yeah. You going to the same place? Beat you. Who the All thunk? Right. Who All the right. thunk? You know. Week one, we're fighting Team Alpha. I beat Punk. Oh wait. I, I just beat Nephew. Who the thunk? In the words of Paul Rudd, who the thunk? Hey, look at us. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Who would have thunk? thunk? Not me. Not me. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. Here we are. Right? Here we are. Oh, wow. Street Fighter League Season 3, uh, man. This is I only week one. It. It's oh. only week one. I can smell oh, the sodium boy. in the air from here. We're a country mile away from the competition, and I can still smell it. Let's go. Oh, boy. We needed this. 2020 definitely needed mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. Things are picking up. Oh! Yo. Okay. Yo, but first off, let's talk a little bit about CJ Truth. CJ Truth is one of the most powerful American Street Fighter players there is out there. And I say this because he's a Street Fighter 4 player that that's when I came to know and love. And we've seen him here on Street Fighter League. And now, returning once again on Team All In. I want to see, gets the throw. I want to see what the options Ooh. are. And IDOM is a Capcom Cup champion, though. Oh, he had more than enough to do it with Critical Art. But man, the calculated route from IDOM to finish it with just one bar. Fantastic. Dude, that first round was super Immaculate. fast. Immaculate. Oh, that was so far behind the, the hair. What punch. do you mean? Oh, man. That was on the ponytail hold. Oh, okay. Smart decision not to try to anti air there. But here comes CJ Truth with the momentum forward throw. You can't get a media off of this. Crouch strong to be it. Deep dive kick. A lot of pressure from CJ Truth. Ah, mm -hmm. yes. He tries to Finds go for the anti air. East the EX dive kick because of it. CJ Truth turning up the offense. Low forward into that activation. Plus frames after the EX heart raid, but CJ Truth just backs off, knowing that V-Trigger is a threat. Big jump in Roundhouse. The heavy kick lands, finds the target. Nice break there. CJ Truth again backing up. All he needs is one hit. Needs to be careful, man. Cammy doesn't have much life. You get hit, it can be a lot of damage on the table. You're going to be in the corner on top. Look at this damage. Look at the blood up there on the life bar. There's oh, a throw. No. You're about, you should have spent the meter. You should have spent the meter. You had to look at SKC's face. Yeah, man. Oh they can regret not spending that super. Round one. All right, going into this next game. Already starting off great for Team All In. Again, they're looking for. Uh, <laughs> this OCV is completely in CJ's lap no. at this point. Wow, the high heel anti air. Yeah, they're this looking is... for this clean sweep. I'm telling you, they're they're living up to their namesake again. Oh, the wow. same side off that V skill looked like a switch. It's all Idom at this point, chasing him down with the V skill as well. Oof, that crouching heavy punch interrupt with the crouching medium punch this time around. Dash up to keep the corner, blocks the V reversal. 
CJ turning it up a little bit. Tries to get the throw. Catches Crouching and the Confirm on the combo. CJ's offense is completely turned around. This is the CJ I know and love. Anti-air. Wait a minute. I may have spoke too soon. Likely and still in favor of Poison at this point. Nice tech there. Very dangerous situation up in the EX heart rate. You have to make the right decisions, but when it comes to IDOM, he's prepared for everything you're trying to do. Anti-air from full screen. Stay out of the air. Just the whip. The, the whip stance on top of that. I have Sheesh. to tell you that that was a hard read because you have to hold those stances and you don't know which one she's actually holding. So the fact that it was the anti-air one and CJ did dive kick lets you know far ahead in the mind game that Idom is. But it's not too far because the life lead and the stun is on the side of CJ. Nice activation. Heart rate, B reversal oh, in the corner. That was kind of crazy. Oh, no. I don't agree using the B reversal to corner yourself thinking that you're going to get the offense started on IDOM. He's a Capcom Cup champion. And look at the amount of gray health just ticking away from CJ. Finds Activate an opening after the crouch fierce. Yes, sir. V-trigger. This should be it. more than enough. You got it, bro. You got it, man. And there's the team backup. You see Pump come alive on the mic. Give me another round, though. CJ True, give me, just, I'm going to say completely unbiased, but I, I just want to see a little more, if you please. Oh, without a doubt. I Can I have see, some more, sir? I want to see Alpha 3 play some more games. The Oliver Twist. Can I have some more, sir? Please, sir. Ooh, oh, side, side switch. switch. Very, very subtle, too. Wasn't a dash up, but rather mm -hmm. a walk. That's how you fake him out for real. You slow him down on the cross on Uh-oh. Offense once again. This is where CJ excels. Oh. Heart rate that is plus, and it hit as well. Now you're in the corner. Bad position to be in. There's a lot of reach on the side of Poison. So now you got to deal with these normals. That crouching heavy punch. Ooh. The reversal blocked again. Still successful out of the corner. Great jab on the walk back. I got to say, the amount of the meter management coming from IDOM has been spectacular. So on far. both of them has been ridiculous. Uh oh, spin it. Oh, oh, no EX. I thought that was going to be EX. Plus frames. Yes, sir. Nice view reversal that time around. Oh, the jump. Heavy kick to throw off the timing. There's a throw in the corner. CJ, you Another can't throw. handle the truth in that one small miscalculation by IDOM. Just try to avoid, like, normal jumping on him because you've been anti-air by cross me. Yeah, and, and yeah. Uh, if he does the heart rate really close to medium one, you can DP it and V trigger because it's like minus eight or something. Okay. And you can also super. Wait, heart rate is the um the the the, like, the whip. Yeah. yeah the okay. whip. The medium ones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Watch out for the delayed dive kick when he can beat your. Crush me. Yeah. 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 Uh, I gotta. I uh, what you call? It? I gotta look out for that. Round one. Fight. I'm sitting pretty over there. SKZ is like when you need the when you need that download, you know where to go. And what can you say to like the Capcom Cup champion? I mean, this guy has done it all. He studied like every one of his opponents, right? My man plays online and had a hundred game win streak, bro. You think he didn't run into every character on the way to a hundred wins? Are you crazy? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. CJ. Sandy's gonna battle through, taking that second game. Great interrupt. Stopping the dash up. Maybe expecting a jump right there. We've seen a lot of defensive jump backs from Idom oh. as well. He oh. caught the delayed crouch jab, and that's all Idom needed to get the sequence going. Heart raid, mix up. Hold the flames. The poison cocktail stuns on the table. Plus, oh, overhead. The tender. The throw bait. That could have been like highly punishable as well, right? Oh no, that was the regular one. No, that was the regular one. That was the regular one. Yeah, that wasn't even over. Ooh. Nice trade off there. Once again, in the corner, we've seen the offense for CJ work out so much, but we've also seen such defense, great defensive calls Ooh. by IDOM to get out of that corner, to control the corner, as well as convert damage. Speaking of getting out of that corner, CJ Truth has done an immaculate job of Ooh. making sure. Staying in the middle of the screen, great target with that uh, air medium punch, heavy punch. Ooh. It's a yes, button. Sir. Great conversion off the counter hit from CJ Truth. Now trying to lock down Item, but we've seen how effective Item is in the corner. But a lot of damage on the table for CJ Truth. Big counter hit. No, still got to throw. Medium kick stops the dash. That's a bold call out. Plus. Ooh, tried to hit a button. You're dead. No. Not quite. I like him contesting with buttons in that, se in that uh, scenario. Oh, no call out. You are so lucky. Oh, what are you doing spinning meter to get in? We've seen the anti-airs, and once again, IDOM. That is a clean team sweep on the side of Team All-In to go up against Ooh. Alpha 3. 
What a first showing, especially for SKZ. Oh man, this could not be, this is not how you want to start season three. CJ Truth as well. Try the battle back in that last game, was not feeling it. We saw Punk go up against SKZ. It did not go the way he expected it to at all. And a thankful, thankful, and thankfully on the side of Gustavo, they actually blocked Colleen, had to deal with the Lucia from uh, from Nephew, and that's what really changed up the game. Once again, the format of Street Fighter League is completely different. Knowing what characters, the player you're going to have to face, and knowing that lineup is so important to getting a nice victory on your team side, especially week one, knowing that they actually stopped the first character, right? They blocked Colleen and yeah, took full yeah. advantage of the team ban. That's perfect. I was actually more concerned for the likes of All In because you take a look at the dynamic between the two teams, right? A lot of these players have played off against each other. Uh -huh. Again, I mentioned it right before the match happened, SKZ being the wild card, right? Not to take any uh, any of his accolades away from him. Again, no. there wasn't, there just wasn't enough data, right? Just knowing the fact that he plays set and has made it into Capcom Cup via the online circuit, the Capcom Pro Tour circuit, right? I feel like it just wasn't enough seeing him off wide and dominate the way he did against Punk. A clean two games straight, that's something that was unpredictable and the fact that all in did it as a unit three to zero i did not see it coming to be honest i thought it'd be a lot closer idom's team is looking so buff right now so buff right now and with words from our winners we're gonna go to rob tv who is talking to the team thank you so much guys i am here with the ridiculous seth master skz how are you feeling right now uh, i'm feeling good I mean, uh, when I came to America and I got this chance to participate in the SFL, one of the players that I wanted to play most was against Punk because, you know, he's one of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. And that made me, um, enab enabled me to go play against him without fear. So I went in with the mindset that I had nothing to lose and I just did what I had to do. So when you seen that you were going up against Punk, all, there was no nervousness for you. There was just a sense of excitement. Yeah, pretty much. I just wanted to beat him. So what do you think about the, uh, actually there's a lot of people who may not know about you yet, they, or I guess now they definitely should know. Some of them call you a wild card, so on and so forth. Do you feel like that you've shown, that you've uh, sent a message to a lot of the players here and put them on notice that, hey, I'm a serious competitor? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, with this win, I, I'm hoping that um, other comp competitors will be able to take me more seriously. And uh, I look forward to playing more great matches with them as well, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we've recently seen his Seth tearing through CPT online. And there was a few people in the chat, I'm sure, saying, who is this guy? Here at Street Fighter League, some people might have been saying that. No more of those questions, because every time someone asks that, clearly he shows up and he shows you who he is. He doesn't need to say much. SKZ, amazing job. Back to the desk. What a perfect interview with Rob TV for it to be SKZ talking about his victory and showing up to Street Fighter League. I love the fact that he touched on Punk being one of the players that he really wanted to beat and that it meant a lot. It also shakes up the Street Fighter League world because you know a lot of these players look at Punk as the guy to beat and not many have been able to do it. The fact that SKZ shows up day one, week one, gets a W and secures it for Team All In. I like where this is going. Yeah, again, this is only week number one. We've seen so much talent in all of these matches between Nasser and UIU, Alpha 3 and All In. Yeah. I'm actually, I, I want to talk to these players and see what they have lined up for their next opponents, right? How they're feeling after the matches. Um, the losing teams as well, because again, this could be, you know, something that kind of shakes them up a little bit. It's like they're not used to the team format quite yet. They're just playing uh, as each week passes by, right? But again, I just want to get the insight of how they're feeling so badly. But uh, I digress. Either way, it's been uh, wonderful games all across the board. All in, sweeping Alpha 3. Woo. And imagine, right, SKZ taking the spot of Phenom. It's getting hot. Just, it just works so well still. You saw how all in he was. He's like, I think I've earned the right to be here at this point. So big ups to all the teams so far. Bigger ups to all in and Team Master so far. Look, all I know is that I cannot wait 
for the rest of the season to get underway. I can feel the salt for miles and miles around, and that is only the tip of the iceberg for what we have available here for Street Fighter League Season 3. And we're going to give you a little more, but it's going to be right after this break. Stay tuned, guys. Beyond the battle! Get ready! Destroy! Begin! Let's go! Disappear! Kneel! Welcome to the post game show Street Fighter League week one is already in the books we've had some explosive matches and I feel like the standings are already on their head personally I want to get back to these matches that we've seen today first off we saw UIU the new UIU go up against the new and improved Nasser and that definitely looked like it was not going to be a good look for Nasser Samurai going down losing his first match season three with his new team with his new sponsor to Kami I felt like personally that was a great showing for Kami uh, not so good for Samurai obviously and then right after that we had Angry Bird come up get the W versus JB right. to make sure to secure his spot he goes to the back of the queue and then we have Big Bird come up and he also loses with his G the G that we just found out about he loses to leaving Angry Bird to come back and get the OCV he takes out Kami he takes out Oil King gets the W secures secures their first victory here how did you feel going in did you think nasser had like you know an advantage of sorts did you feel like samurai was going to be able to bring it back give me some of your thoughts so i gotta say first and foremost that uh angry bird channeled his inner samurai right <laughs> getting that ocv attitude or that aura in he's just like i gotta do it for my team but all jokes aside um it was it was very interesting to see samurai up first for once yeah uh from what we've seen in season one and two right um, honestly, I had a lot of confidence going into it with uh, Team Nasser just because of the players backing Samurai up this yeah. time around, right? right? Angry Bird and Big Bird definitely no slouch. When it comes to one of the best or some of the best players in the world, they're always in the bubble when it comes to that conversation. Uh, some of the best representation in the UAE, and honestly, it's it's like 
seeing that transition from their characters, right? There's still a little bit of polishing, little bit of polishing up from Big Bird when, in terms of the G play, but yeah. without a doubt, I'm ready to see his Rashid. And then uh, Angry Bird coming in with the Seth in this amount of time in 2020, grinding it out. I've yeah. seen the Twitter clips of him and Adele playing. This guy has been grinding out hella matches. I'm absolutely impressed with his performance, taking out the likes of uh, the rest of the team, the, the entire, entire team, team of Team <laughs> UIU. On the offhand, though, I am still I am still excited to see how UIU will adapt, right? Kami had a fantastic showing in his debut of Street true. Fighter League, That's taking true. out Samurai. Um, and, of course, JB being here back-to-back, -back, also taking the spot of NL from Team UIU, right? Still kept it very close. And then Oil King also taking a win off of Big Bird. So, again, those matches came down to the wire. You had to see it. You got to check out the VODs. It was actually very, very close. And one of the key things I did like in that post-interview, by the way, was Angry Bird when he mentioned it he was like you know what i was actually gunning for jb as soon as i got rid of him that's where i got my confidence mm, that's how i yeah, knew i was yeah. like okay i think i might have this in the bag and i can appreciate that too well i mean it all went down to team nasser angry bird running it all the way back impressive showing for the first team uh as well as just the fact like i said they're no slouch this is not their first team rodeo so look forward to a lot more from team nasser let's jump over to the other team battle that we had today we had team alpha three versus team all in team all in made up of the Capcom Cup champion, IDOM. You had 801 Strider, the scumbag, as well as SKZ, the wild card, pulling out the Seth to take out none other than a returning Street Fighter League champion in Punk to seal the deal, personally. Uh, I feel like that says a, so much, so much for what SKZ wanted to accomplish. Even said in the post-game interview that Punk was somebody that he wanted to take out, and we all know that Punk has a huge target on the back. And that's that was the second match that we saw. The first match was Nephew having to go with the Lucia because there was a ban on Colleen to try to take take out 801 Strider, who literally, I'm thinking the 801 Strider was going to be playing a lot more defensive, pulls out the Urian, secures just the first going W, ham. just going crazy. And you can see that the other teams are saying like, hey, look, he's playing pretty sporadic. He's dashing in. Maybe you should go for this. Did not work out at all. 801 Strider holds it. And then we already talked about the second match. And the third match was just the same because we see where all in has Idom as a the captain and the player and the anchor, the Capcom Cup champion. You, that's who you want to put as anchor. And that gave us our first sweep. No wins on the side of Team All In with returning champions. CJ Truth went down. Punk went down. Nephew went down. And it's all because of SKZ. It's all because of 801 Strider. And it's all because of Idom. Give me some of your thoughts. You made it seem like... SKZ went from wild card to trap card. Like the I way mean, you, the way you've you activated my... I mean, that's basically what happened. That's basically what happened. It was right here the whole time. And with all things considered, the Seiko play of the day goes to none other than SKZ and his phenomenal performance going up against Punk, one of the biggest targets in Street Fighter League Season 3. And SKZ did it with such finesse. SKZ making a showing coming here for Street Fighter League. First showing in Street Fighter League. What a way to make your presence known by taking out the Alpha, a returning champion here for Street Fighter League. SKZ starting with the Seth, ending with the W, keeping the team afloat, and I would love to see what's gonna happen next week. Seiko, play of the day will be SKZ versus Punk. Congratulations, well deserved, and I can't wait to see what you have coming for us further down the line in Street Fighter League. I also wanna talk about the the first match as well. When you talk okay. about uh, Nephew, when you talk about 801 Strider, both of the characters being banned, right? The targets of bans, I should say. Right. And 801 Strider just going full force, right? There's only one speed he knows, and it's fast. <laughs> the way he played that out, he had no fear. That's true. From anything that Lucia had to offer. And it makes me wonder, will Nephew resort to going back to that G play we saw in Season 2? Is that going to be a thing? Or even maybe like a cami, right? I see him like dabble a little bit, but... I don't think that's going to be a problem anymore now that, like, you know, they're going to be moving forward in the next round, Robin. If they meet or when they meet again, you know, you you already know that Nephew's going to bring that Colleen, obviously. As for CJ Truth, there was a little bit of frustration there emotionally. Yeah, that was definitely true. We've seen those kind of signs from CJ Truth. I feel like the way he plays, it's... I don't want to say it's on or off, depending on how he's feeling, because he's been super consistent throughout the, like, the CPT. We've seen how he performed at the NA Regional Finals in one of the years, and I think it was like a 20, 2018, I believe, okay. um, taking out the likes of Tokido, right? 
um, he has it in him to be a yeah. champion, without a doubt. But there are certain moments where he can get flustered, and I feel like he needs to develop that as a player a little bit more. But there's plenty of time here in Season 3, right? It's only week number one. He's got plenty of games to show up and really take it down for his team. And again, I don't have any doubts in my mind that Alpha 3 is still one of the teams to look at to take it all the way. But as it stands right now, all in is at the top of the leaderboards, right? Taking it full 3-0. And then at right underneath them, second place, you have Team Nasser with three wins under their belt as well. That leaves UYU with at least two wins and then uh, Alpha 3 at the very bottom with zero. Well, we know how those standings go. I hope you guys get a look at it because there's going to be a lot of changes going forward. And personally, I honestly, I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen in the follow-up weeks. We have our first two team battles already done with some pretty explosive results on top of that. And we still got a lot more Street Fighter play with a lot of other team members and a lot of other characters that you guys are going to get to see in the coming weeks of Street Fighter League Season 3. And man, what a way to start off this episode. A lot of Street Fighter. There's a lot of Street Fighter that's going to be here. I can't wait for you guys to tune in and check it out. Oh, without a doubt. Tomorrow, in fact, we do have Street Fighter League Pro JP happening tomorrow, October 9th, for week number three. On top of that, this weekend, we're actually going to have the CPT Online, the European West region, number two, also streaming live on the Capcom Fighters channel. And of course, be sure to tune in for next week's Street Fighter League Season 3 as we see Psycho Shinobi go off against Dynamite as well as All In go off against Team Nasser. And that's going to be happening 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Guys, thank you for tuning in this week to Street Fighter League. And like I said, this is only the beginning and it can only get better. Guys, I will see you next week on Street Fighter League.